This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And today we have another important show to you. It's about the investment of our time. I mean, this time, not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. It is the most important financial education investment of uh, investment you can make in your brain here. And our guest today is Brian London. He's the president and CEO of Jefferson Financial and the publisher of the Gold Newsletter. And Brian and I are the old guys. We've been the um, deplorables, as Hillary would say, because uh, we invested in gold and silver for all of these years. Brian is, a, is he actually knew uh, James Blanchard personally. And for those who may not know the history of gold is that in 71, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, which meant the government the treasury and the Fed could print as much money as they like and the economy took off. But all sleigh rides come to an end and we're coming to the end of that sleigh ride of just easy money. And the other thing was though in 74, actually in 72, yeah, 72, I bought my first gold coin. I bought it in Hong Kong. And the reason I had to buy it in Hong Kong, it was a, it was a gold Kruger in uh, from South Africa. The reason I bought, had to buy it in, in South Africa because it was illegal from Americans to own gold. And so that's kind of the history of gold. It's really been hated, disliked, uh, dumped upon. It's been the uh, odd man out every time. So Brian knows personally uh, Jim Blanchard who made gold legal again. Any comments, Kim? Well, I'm, it's always fascinating having um, experts on about about gold, and you know, we, you've had Harry Dent who said gold's going to go to a thousand. No, four hundred. Four hundred. Well, he upped it to a thousand. Now he's he's been a little more optimistic. Uh, Jim's record says it's going to fifteen thousand. Um, I've heard as much as fifty thousand. Um, so, as you say, Robert, though, if the price of gold is going up, that's usually not a good sign for the economy. So, I'm really anxious to hear. Uh, Brian London's, um, London, Lundin? Lundin. Lundin, excuse me. So I'm very excited to hear Brian Lundin's take on where it's going. And Brian is also the host of the annual New Orleans Investment Conference. And we're going to find out if that is still going to happen in person or virtually. It is it's the a, most important, uh, we call it educational event you can attend in New Orleans Investment Conference because the most important asset to invest in today is gold. So with that said, welcome to the program, Brian. Welcome, Brian. Great to be with you both today. Thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. I don't know what more I can add to it. You just really hit <laughs> both of you. Well, let's, let's talk about this guy, Blanchard, because he was a wild man, wasn't he? Yes, he was, Robert. And you would have been just uh, uh, simpatico with him. You would have been good, great buddies. Um, because you're both you know, wild men in your own way. But Jim, Jim was something else, very charismatic individual, very good friend of mine. Um, and, and, and you're right, he bought his first gold coins about the same time you did. Uh, you know, after Nixon severed the last tie between the dollar and gold in 1971, Jim started Gold Newsletter, which I still publish and, and edit. Uh, and he started advocating and pro organizing protests to legalize gold again, because people don't realize it was illegal to own gold back then. And it was like owning heroin or cocaine or plutonium or something like this. It was a substance outlawed by the government because it made citizens somewhat immune to what the government wanted to do or was going to do to them by through monetary debasement. So Jim did crazy stuff. He smuggled in a two ounce gold bar from Canada would have protests around the country and send a press release out to the local Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and the Treasury uh, before each protest and say, saying, I'm going to be here in front of the cameras brandishing this two ounce gold bar. Please come and arrest me. <laughs> and, and of course, they never did. They never played into it. Um, Nixon, you know, his second inauguration, Jim hired a biplane to tow a legalized gold banner over Nixon's head while he was being inaugurated, uh, which of course would, you know, you'd be in Guantanamo Bay if you tried that today. Um, 
So yeah, he was a wild man, but he was a wild man who had principles and ideals, you know, libertarian points of view, like uh, you and many of us share even today. But he was really at the forefront of what we call the, the hard money movement and the movement to really popularize uh, gold and to, to encourage people to own it. So Brian, we just, we have, we have the whole cast of characters. We just got through talking to Jim Records, who's calling for gold at 15,000 an ounce. And then we've had Harry Dent, who says 400. And then we have Peter Schiff, who argues with Records about what is the definition of inflation. And I'm going, who cares, you guys? My question to you is this, why is gold so hated? Well, because it is, as you mentioned, anti-establishment. Uh, gold, very simply put, is freedom. It's security. Uh, because, you know, what we're seeing today has a, little, a few variances, but there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, every time throughout history when civilizations, when governments have overspent, and, you know, in Roman times, it might have been military campaigns throughout the empire. It was even then entitlements, uh, you know, bread and circuses and the like. When, but governments would always overspend their means. And when they did that, the only way to handle these debts that they would accrue would be to devalue the currency that they were denominated in. In Roman times, they just took silver out of the Roman denarius and just debased the actual amount of silver in the coin over time. And, um, and that's the way they did it back then. They've done it throughout history. You know, Argentina has had so many currency crises. It's the same thing. They just devalue their currency to cheapen the value of their debts. Today, we're, the only unique thing about today is that every economy, every country is in the same boat. They've all created these monstrous debts. And the only way to handle it is to debase their currencies. But they're all racing to the bottom of the hill at the same time. So, you know, people talk about the value of the dollar. They talk about the value of the dollar in relation to the euro or the yen uh, or, you know, other fiat currencies. What everything is devaluing against and will devalue against because it has to. So people is gold. hate gold because it's, it gives you independence, control over your yeah, own destiny. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It is the source of freedom. That's something that Jim. Blanchard understood innately, and uh, it, it was a source of individual freedom and security. So, what, you know, one of the arguments we hear about gold is, oh, well, if they confiscated gold in 1970, or if they confiscated gold back when, um, what's to stop them from confiscating gold again? Uh, well, nothing, <laughs> frankly, that they could try. And there are ways to protect yourself. There's ways to store gold. There's no, there's ways to buy gold without there being a record that you own it, uh, a way to store it even domestically or even overseas, um, where, you know, it's out of the hands of, of government or anybody else. Um, there, you know, back when the government, when FDR confiscated gold, he didn't actually confiscate it. He said, hand it in and I'm going to pay you $20 and 67 cents an ounce today. And then a few weeks later, he revalued it to $35 uh, after he paid for it all. But anyway, uh, back then they didn't confiscate, for instance, historic U.S. coins. So you can buy historic coins that are trading close to bullion value and call yourself a collector, and you'll probably have some degree of protection from a future confiscation. But I, I think, frankly, the risk of that is low because these days, you know, it, it would have such a hue and cry from people about confiscating gold that I don't think it would go over today. Well, but it, if it happened, you're right. It would be like taking away our guns. You know, there'd be a few gunfights out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I tell people that things are so crazy these days, you need to invest in the four metals, gold, silver, and copper jacketed lead. <laughs> <laughs> all, all four could be confiscated at any point in time. So, Brian, historically, this has happened before. In other words, what went on in Rome is happening in Washington, D.C. right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to uh, visualize it as you, you know, Peter Schiff in a, in a toga walking around the Roman Forum. And him <laughs> saying, there, goes him, they, there he goes again, you know, talking about the end of the world, the Roman Empire is never going to end. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it has happened before. Human nature is the same as it was 
in ancient Greece in ancient Rome, and that means the government is the same. They're, they're going to screw over the common man uh, to protect themselves, to protect their source of power. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'll be one of the speakers at the New Orleans Investment Conference. I love going to your conference, not because what I have to say is that relevant or I'm that much of an expert, but I go to listen to the other experts because I would say gold guys are in the same category as Bitcoin guys. They're kind of whack jobs. You know, they, they really don't trust the government. And so, you know, when I used to go to your conference, they had all these, you know, junior miners and gold miners and silver miners, and they had, you know, Peruvian dancers jumping all over the place trying to get you to invest in their gold mine. But I always went there for the diversity of education because everybody came at, let's say, the subject of gold and silver from a different point of view. And is Peter Schiff going to be one of your speakers? Absolutely. We have all the, the old gang back. And just before I get into the speakers, you're absolutely correct. You've come to learn just like the rest of the attendees. You told me that before your first appearance five or six years ago, whenever it was. And sure enough, you sat in the front row with a notepad and filled it up on a <laughs> daily basis taking notes. Uh, so you, 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 know, you talk the talk and you walk it too. Um, and, and it is, it's a fantastic learning experience. As we have you, of course, we have Jim Rickards, we have Rick Rule, Peter Schiff, uh, Danielle DiMartino Booth, Grant Williams, I mean, it goes on and on, Doug Casey, Jim Bianco, Peter Bookbar. Um, I really urge people to go to uh, our site. And actually, for, for Rich Dad, we have a special link called at goldnewsletter.com forward slash Rich Dad that lists all of the speakers because this year's speaker roster, I think, is the best in our nearly 50 year history because being virtual, I can reach out across the world and bring the top experts in virtually without having to frankly pay the airfare and everything else. So I've been able to get some speakers that I've been really wanting to get for many years. Uh, and this year I'm able to do it. Well, that's fantastic because I'm looking forward to it. So I'll speak to all the millennials out there, you know, who are Bitcoin devotees. The trouble with Bitcoin, it's around 10,000 bucks. And if you're unemployed and living in uh, Joe Biden's basement, you might have a problem paying the $10,000. But this education in gold and silver is crucial. So if you're stuck with student loan debt because you have a master's degree in underwater basket weaving, this might be the best investment you ever make is come to the New Orleans Investment Conference and listen to all the guys out there who have been you know, really, really kind of dumped on, been the outsiders, been the outcasts for years and years and years. You know, we just had Jim Records on, and you know, when I was, I, f I bought my first gold coin, like I said, in 72, and everybody else was in US treasuries. And, you know, I just didn't understand treasuries, but the reason is a treasury had a yield to it. You know, it paid interest, but gold didn't. I said, yeah, but I'd rather have gold. And I don't know why. So it's always an honor, you know, to be invited by Brian London to go to the New Orleans Investment Conference and hang out with all their characters out there. Because the definition of a gold miner is a liar standing in front of a hole in the ground. And there's a lot of those guys out there. It's, it's one of the most treacherous investment conference, not conferences, but subjects. Because for centuries and centuries and centuries, humans have tracked gold. I still, I still come back and I tell Kim about, I was up in the Andes looking for a gold mine, you know, the same as Pizarro did when he went there to kill the Inca. You know, I'm standing up at 14,000 feet. I'm looking at this hill and I see these little holes drilled across this range. You know, out, out, out Kim and I were starting a gold mine. It was called Mondoro, World of Gold. And so we're in Peru starting a gold mine. <clears throat> and I didn't understand gold until I saw these little holes drilled alongside a mountain range. <clears throat> And I asked the mining engineer, I said, what's that? He says, those are many gold mines. You know, for thousands of years, humans have sought gold. And I don't know why. It's kind of a spiritual, intuitive thing. And since we couldn't cut a deal in Peru, I had to go to Mongolia. And I'm in Mongolia looking for gold, which was an interesting experience also. And we went to what's called the checkerboard. And the checkerboard <clears throat> was this huge field where for thousands of years, the Chinese or the Mongolians were out there digging for gold. And I realized 
the Chinese or the Mongolians and the Peruvians or the Inca, they didn't have internet, but there was something driving them. There was something magical or attractive about plata, e oro, gold and silver. And that's what called Pizarro and Magellan and all those Cortez to look for gold. America was discovered not because of the California beaches, it was because of gold. So that's why it could be the best investment time and money you could spend the New Orleans Investment Conference. And we come back, we'll be going more talking to Brian London about what else he sees in the future and why you should be at least investing first in your education before you invest in gold. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news today about gold, because if the price of gold goes up, the economy is going down, and you better find out why it's going up and why you don't want to go down with the economy. Our guest today is Brian London, President and CEO of the Jefferson Financial and the publisher of the Gold Newsletter. And he's putting on the New Orleans uh, Conference. I go to it every year, not to speak, because I already know what I'm going to say. I got to listen to all the other characters out there because in the gold business, there's a lot of characters. Any comments, Kim? Yes. Yeah, so, and, and Brian, your uh, New Orleans Investment Conference this year is, is virtual. You're going to have all your guests live via Zoom or yeah. Skype or whatever. So um, even more opportunity because you're going to have more opportunity to bring in the, the best of the best from all over the world. So that's very, very exciting. So Brian, we've talked to all sorts of people about their future outlook and their crystal ball on the future of gold. So given this pandemic, what do, what do you see? What do you see coming down the road? Well, more of the same, frankly. And, you know, everybody's looking at this election as being pivotal. And of course, every presidential election these days is is pivotal and seemingly more so than the last one. But really, whoever is elected is going to be more of the same in that the Federal Reserve and central banks around the world have built this house of cards through uh, not just easy money, but ever easier money. You know, it's, it, they peg interest rates at zero now twice over the last decade or so um after each financial crisis and this is unprecedented really in in human history you know if you go back before 2008 and, and hearkening back to what you said earlier about crazy people in this sector these crazy people have been right all along you know and if you look at before 2008 if you would have said we're going to have interest rates at zero more than that we're going to have the majority of sovereign debt out there at negative interest rates. We're going to have the uh, the federal debt doubling with each president. We're going to go upwards of $27 trillion in debt. Uh, we're going to have all of these things happen with the Fed just printing money hand over fist. And people would have told you back then that you were crazy. But now crazy talk has become normalized. It's become accepted as the way things are. So the Federal Reserve is going to keep doing that. Uh, Fed Chairman Powell just came out today talking about how Congress really needs to err on the side of too much stimulus, that the economy desperately needs more stimulus. It's a, just a matter of who's going to make the highest bid on which side of the political aisle. There is absolutely no fiscal restraint anymore. And the more money is printed, the cheaper it becomes. And obviously, more valuable things become for most of them, gold, which is of course the monetary metal. Oh, Peter Schiff's going to take off on that one, man. <laughs> well, Peter would still be talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's really funny is the argument between Peter Schiff and Jim. We just interviewed Jim Record, and the question: is inflation, inflation, or deflation? So those are the cast of characters at the New Orleans Investment Conference. Plus, you have Rick Roll. Yeah. Rick Roll is the godfather of precious metals. And how about, uh, God, what's his name? Um, I forget his name. But anyway, he's always at your conference. He's one of the most interesting characters. Is, is Tucker going to be there? Yes, Tucker Carlson is going to be there. He's got, he is our keynote speaker. He's you know, wonderful. You know, uh, let, me, let me tell you, the reason I like Tucker, he's uncensored on Fox, on Tucker Carlson yeah. show even more uncentered at your conference. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. You remember, I believe you met him at my last conference that he spoke at a couple of years ago. He's really a very gracious guy in person. We'll talk to anybody. Um, 
really nice guy, but he is right on point. You're right, he's uncensored, he's very controversial, but he talks in our, uh, at our conference and in that kind of atmosphere, he says a lot more than he says on television. And it, it's really very interesting. So what is your, you know, what, I was going to give this commercial message, but our, our programs are held on iTunes, Android, on YouTube, so you can go there to listen to it. Also, all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. And we archive them because we don't sell it. We're not selling gold or silver or Bitcoin or anything. We sell education, PR education. And it's free. So the thing is here, you know, discuss this program, this Rich Dad Radio Show with Brian London, with your friends, family, and business associates, and then you know, come to the come to the New Orleans investment conference via Zoom. How much does that cost, Brian? Three seventy-five, three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Um, and I, I tell people this and they'll realize it, you know, and we do have a money back guarantee, by the way. So you're going to get your value out of this. Um, it, it's crucial that you know how to invest in gold and you know what's going to happen to protect what you have. The other side of that coin, and I know there's three sides to every coin, but the other side uh, is that this is an incredible environment in which to make money because as gold and silver prices rise, those mining stocks that you were referring to also rise. And we've had some of the recommendations at previous conferences over the last couple of years go up five, 10, 20, and more times in value. But the key is you have to know how to invest in that. And we have literally the world's top experts here, not only telling you what to look for in these mining stocks, but what their top recommendations are. And you know, I've been in the, the business for decades, so I don't put anybody up on our podium that isn't among the tops in the business and completely ethical and honest and, and forthright. So, so to your point, Brian, about how to invest, people don't know how to invest. What are some of the mistakes? What are, what are some common mistakes people do not, that the, what are some of the mistakes people make when investing in gold? The, the, the most common mistake is they look into it a little bit and think they understand it. If you're going to invest, I mean, this gets right back to your whole, uh, your whole mantra about education. I tell people that it's a great sector to invest in because it's inefficient. Because if you're willing to put in the skull sweat, a little time, some money to subscribe to the, to the best newsletters, go to the conferences, if you're willing to do the research, you can take advantage of these inefficiencies and find some just outstanding, incredible investments. But if you're not going to take the time, then just invest in the, you know, the major mining indexes. Like, well, that's uh, a big point. For three hundred seventy-five dollars, like I said, it is a lot less expensive than your student loan debt for your master's in under, underwater basket weaving, which won't make you any money. But the other other reason is this: this is gold and silver are the investments of today, not tomorrow, but today. As Jim Ricketts was saying, it's gonna, gold's gonna go to 200, I mean, uh, 15,000 an ounce by 2025. That's only five years away. Mm -hmm. And so well, I'll, I'll wait till 2025 as well, then you'll pay 15,000 an ounce. And so you know, Kim and I have been buying gold since the eighties, you know, gold's down to only 250 bucks in 2000 and today it's about 2000 and what what Jim is saying is it, this is about to make its move it's going to go parabolic from here so if you're waiting for it to change or you're waiting for it to catch up you're going to miss the move so this is like buying apple in 2000 and amazon in 1990 and all this so that's why the new orleans investment conference for 375 dollars is a bargain plus you get to listen to all the characters and not make the mistakes that most idiots make, like Kim and I did when we started our own gold mine. <laughs> and speaking of gold mines, Brian, you mentioned junior miners. Um, we went, when we were talking to Jim Rickards and Robert was asking about um, Warren Buffett buying barracks and um, selling, Jim, selling bank and shares. Selling bank shares. Uh, Rickards' comment was that uh, what's going to happen with barracks is that they're going to start because they don't want to be producing and, and finding and all of that. Um, they're going to start buying up these junior miners. Is yep. that, do you, you think that's what's going to happen? Absolutely. They, the junior mining companies are, in effect, the uh, 
the exploration arms of the major mining companies because they're so big and burdened by bureaucracy and, and inefficient. It's these really these modern day prospectors who go out there and they find the deposits and they sell them to the majors. And there's a laundry list of about a half dozen or so really big deposits that were found during the long downturn in the metals that are sitting there wait, waiting to be purchased by the, the big mining companies, and they will. And that alone is one area that's a real profit opportunity. So that's, so you need to know which junior mining companies to look into that may be bought by a barracks or a, a was it Newmont? Yeah. Newmont, the other one. Um, Newmont, Barrick, all the big ones. And, and frankly, most of the better ones are going to be at our conference in our exhibit hall, which is just another thing that the conference brings. So another, another big question, you know, that people don't understand is the storage of gold. You know, when Kim and I you know, we were just starting out, we, stored, we, didn't, we couldn't afford gold, so we afforded silver. And it was stored in our closet. But it became a habit of just buying gold and silver. And then the problem became, now we become more valuable so that the banditos will show up. And so as, as years went on, because we just kept buying more gold and silver, then storage became a huge problem. But more than storage is how also how to run with your gold. You know what I mean? You can, you can run with Bitcoin because all it is is a disk drive. But if you have four tons of silver, it's kind of hard to run. And so that's why the whole thing logistical became a, pro, a problem for a lot of people like Kim and I, who've been buying gold and silver for years. So will you be having people talking about storage and all those other things? Yes, we cover that. And we also have a uh, report on our website, Investor's Guide to Gold and Silver, that goes into a bit of that. And yeah, people look at it and, and they end up not doing anything because they get intimidated. What do I do first? I tell them the first thing you do is buy a little silver, buy a little gold, get it in your hot little hands and, and accessible. Don't put it in a bank safe deposit box because one of the things you're insuring against is a bank holiday and you wouldn't be able to get to it. Right. You know, and I don't tell people exactly where to, to store it. Home safes are good. I don't want to know, but have some accessible. And then as you get more and more, go for some of the offsite storage options of which there are a bunch out there, both domestically and internationally. And what happened in Japan and Sweden and all that where the interest rates went negative, what happened was the, safe, the sale of safes went up. Right. People were holding their gold and silver at home in their safes. Now that can be dangerous also, but that's probably one of the best investments you can make as a safe. And then as you get better at it, then you've got to now think about where else can I store it? How can I move it? And there are so many different places you can, let's say, move your gold and silver to. Is that correct? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of places. Um, I recommend, I don't recommend any particular storage facility. Uh, I don't want to get into, into that because there are so many and there are so many good ones. But I recommend that people spread it out. You know, don't put all of your eggs uh, in one basket and diversify your risk by putting it in different locations, different storage facilities. And have if you have the wherewithal to get some out of the country, into an international storage option. And please do it legally because you can do it illegally and legally. So th those, those are very important points is how you move gold and silver and, and where the domicile is where you keep it. And, and you made a good point, Robert. You said we, there was a habit. Um, you get into the habit. And I know a lot of people go, oh, well, I, I bought two, two, two silver coins. I'm like, okay, when are you buying your next one? Oh, I, I just got two, so I'm, I'm good for now. But it was the habit that we kept doing it with, with we had a, a plan and every so much money we had, we would buy more and more silver, more silver, more silver. And then of course we switched to gold, but so it was gonna, the habit. So you're going to have records on Schiff. Yes, records in Schiff um, and, you know, their points of view, or I, I can't argue with anything they have to say. You know, Jim talks about $15,000 gold. It's very see, easy to see how he gets to that point because if you had to restore credibility to the dollar somehow, and the dollar is losing its credibility on a daily basis, considering how much is being printed, you have to have gold backing at some point in time. And if you just back it with 20% of its value in gold, you get to those kinds of numbers of 10, 15,000 dollars. 
Right. The other thing you talked about this since it's August 15th, 1971, when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, the third bull mar market started. And he quotes Jim Rogers as saying he was waiting for a 50% retracing. And the 50% retracing took place in 2015 when gold went to 1,050. Today it's around 2,000. Jim Record's point of view is, and this is why everybody should go to the New Orleans Investment Conference and invest for 75 bucks is because it's going to start going parabolic. It's going to start accelerating at high, you know, what he was saying is a hundred dollar move is a lot of money, but eventually a thousand dollar move is going to be not much money. And then it goes from 2000 to 3000 to 5000, 8000, 10,000. And meanwhile, you're waiting for the time to get in. Right. right. He said, if it goes from 2000 to 3000, that's a high percentage jump. But right. if it goes from 14,000 to 15,000, it's a like 7% jump. So he was saying now's the time not, not to wait. Yeah, and if you look at it from some from other standpoints, historically, in the late 1970s, it went from $100 to $850, or so eight and a half times over. If you look from 2000 to 2011, it went about seven and a half times over in price. So if you look at that 2015 low and you say if it goes seven or eight times higher in price, you're talking about seven or eight thousand dollar gold right there over the course of three to five years. So the analogies are very clear in right there. As Einstein said, it's all relative. When gold is seven thousand, you're gonna wish you had bought it at two thousand. And today it's at two thousand. Yeah, and, and it's a seesaw. If gold goes up to those levels, that means the dollar is on the other side and going down. So you're losing your value. And that's the final word. This is the Rich Dad Radio show the good news and bad news about money. The good news, if gold goes to $15,000, it's bad news for everybody else. So that's why, you know, please, $375, go to the New Orleans Investment Conference. And how do they get in touch with you, Brian? Or well, how they register? They can go to goldnewsletter.com forward slash rich dad, and they'll have all of the information right there. Yeah, and so $375 and some time could be the best investment you could make today. Anyway, thanks for being a friend of the Rich Dad Show. Thank you, uh, Brian. Brian. Thanks for being, a, I, I always call Brian, I say, well, Brian, what's happening? I gotta, cause, you know, he know, he's in it every single day and I'm not. Well, love to talk to you at any time. I love to see my cell phone light up with your name uh, and to talk about the markets and life in general. Thank you both so much. It's been a pleasure as always. Thank, Thank you, you, Brian. And we come back, we'll be finishing up with uh, the final word with Kim and I. Thank you, Brian. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. I want to thank our dear friend, Brian uh, London, L-U-N-D-I-N. -N, and we're promoting the New Orleans Investment Conference, which I'll be a part of, Peter Schiff, and a whole bunch of other people who have been guests on the Rich Dad Radio Show, because gold and silver are the investment of today. Not tomorrow, but today. And, it come, oh yeah, and by the way, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube. And please leave us a comment. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them for one reason. We don't sell any goals over our Bitcoin, but we're an education company. You listen to this program a second or third time and discuss it with your friends who are still trying to save cash. This might be the best thing you can discuss with them is because it's about where cash is going in the future. And that's why they should also attend the New Orleans Investment Conference, which is only $375 and it'll... Sure save you a lot of pain and heartbreak and mistakes. Any comments, Kim? Well, you know, one of the good things uh, that's come out of this whole pandemic is that here's the New Orleans Investment Conference. You used to have to get on a plane. You have to get a hotel. You have to rent a car. You have to do all of that. Um, and, and there were not as many great speakers. There were always great speakers. But now he's able to bring in so many more speakers from all over the world via Zoom or Skype, however he's going to do it. Um, so actually it's now even, it's so much easier and less expensive to get all this information. And you can do it right in your living room. And it's live. And it's live. That's pretty cool. I like that it's live and not recorded. And I think, Robert, was, is, wasn't your first real estate course? You took like 385 I mean, so look <laughs> at the potential, $375. That's a good point, Sarah. Um, <laughs> what, what'd you pick up, Sarah? So I think, one, 
I see a lot of the comments that people ask. We've had so many shows on gold and people always ask, where do I store it? How do I buy it? Well, Dana, Dana Samuelson's going to be there, who oh, is right. one of your gold guys. Um, you know, and he already spoke, uh, Brian mentioned he'll talk about where to store it. So all of these questions that people have, and that is some of their resistance to getting maybe into precious metals, will be, can be answered at this conference. So for 375 that's a pretty good investment into your education. The, the other thing I like, and you, you know, you've educated me on this, is with the dollar and the yen and the euro and everything losing value, um, holding dollars doesn't, or holding currencies Fiat currencies doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. So why not? I don't know why the people are so afraid to transfer it to gold, which is physical, which you can hold, which you can sell at any time you need it. Um, but it just seems like a much more safer bet than a fiat currency. Well, I met a, I met a gentleman last week. He's a missionary. He's an American guy. But he was raised in Argentina, Venezuela, and one other South American country. And he knows what it feels like to have the currency collapse on him. So when people say America's going like Japan, I don't think so. I think America's going more like Argentina, Venezuela, and Zimbabwe. And so and those, those may pretty, be pretty severe, but when the currency collapses, you know, that's when you wish you had some gold, silver, and Bitcoin. So you and I, have, you have been, you tell the story about our, how we, we save silver in our closet in Lowell, California. <laughs> and first to your point about when a dollar, when a currency collapses, we were in, when we were in Zimbabwe, we heard so many stories when the Zimbabwe dollar, was it a dollar? Zimbabwe currency collapsed and how difficult it was. And you'd have to, if you were on the border towns, you were good because you could go across the border. In, in South in, Africa. In South Africa. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing story to hear people who lived through a currency crash like that. But yeah, so um, yes, you and I, Robert, we would, we would buy gold. I mean, we would buy silver and we'd have silver bars. We didn't have much money because silver was cheap, yeah. like three bucks. Yeah. yeah. And so we'd have silver bars and we'd stack them in our little master bedroom closet, you know, with clothes covering it. That was our safe. <laughs> our clothes Talk covered. about one way to store yeah, it. That's how we start it. <laughs> yeah, we look so poor. Nobody would steal nobody, from No, us. nobody would come to us. <laughs> um, and then uh, we were buying this house, our first per personal residence house. We were buying it and the, you were out of town and the realtor called and said, we got you qualified, which was a feat in itself because our credit was in the toilet got you qualified finally, and you need to come up with $23,000 by tomorrow. And I'm like, what? What? And we didn't have any cash. We didn't have, our bank account was like at maybe negative $100. And so I, sure enough, I opened that little closet door and there it was. So I took those brown grocery bags. We had a precious metals dealer down the street. I called him up and I said, I'm bringing in some silver. And I Walked down with this grocery bag, like lugging it through the streets of La Jolla. <laughs> People had no idea what was in there. And I just cashed in a lot of our silver, and that's how we got our first house. So when you buy it, you can cash it in if you need it. But I wouldn't recommend unless you really, really need it. Yeah. The thing about gold and silver is that they're liquid. If you need the cash, you can go back. But the price of cash is actually going down as the government prints more money. So that's why gold and silver are hedge. And that's why I said it's actually bad news if the price goes up. It's bad news for everybody else, but it doesn't have to be bad news for you. So once again, thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And please go to the New Orleans Investment Conference, 300, how much? 375. 375 is a bargain, and you get to hear some of the brightest minds in the most important investment of today. Remember, it's not the price of gold or silver, is the number of ounces of gold or silver you have today. You have one gold coin. If the price goes to 15,000, ain't no big deal. You got a thousand gold coins. It's a big deal. So once again, thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. And thank you to Brian Lundin, host of the New Orleans Investment Conference. Thank you.